Welcome to another episode of Sweeter Than Honey, Chapter 8, All Things New. Behold, I make all things new, Revelation 21.5, from the book Sweeter Than Honey by my father, Mr. K. V. Vergis. Chapter 8, All Things New. The normal human desire is to be successful in everything one does and to be prosperous. But the modern trend is to have everything new. The ancestral possessions passed on to the new generations are stale and not fit enough to be in this modern world. All aspire to for new things, new house, new fashionable dresses, new car, new fridge, so on. As time passes, fashions and models change. We discard the old and acquire new things. So also God wants to give and equip us with new things. And that is why he says, Behold, I make all things new. God says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Again he says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Isaiah 42, 9. The Lord wants to do new things in our lives. We should be willing to forget the past and be ready to receive these new things promised to us. The Lord is going to shower upon us new blessings. We should not worry about our past failures, disappointments and sorrows and should look forward to receive new joy, hope and comfort. The Lord is giving us a new day, a new year, new opportunities, a new life. Let us be ready and willing to make full use of these new opportunities and willing to accept new challenges, changes in our lives without questioning the giver who knows what is good for us. What are the new things the Lord offers or promises? First of all, the Lord wants to give us a new name. Having promised to give all new things, he gives us a new name to those who hear and obey him. And you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will give. Isaiah 62, 2. You shall never be called forsaken, for you shall be my delight. Isaiah 62, 4. The Lord wants to give reputation and honor for the shame endured for his sake. To those who accepted Jesus as the Savior, and because of this much face, shame, ridicule, humiliation, God wants to bring new blessings and honor. God said, No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. And for Sarai, your wife, Sarah, shall be your name, her name. Again, your name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. So God gives new names to those who obey and do his will. Along with the new name, he will bring new honor and new blessings. You may be forsaken by the one who was pledged his honor, forsaken by a dear friend, so long tried and tested, forsaken by a dear relative, forsaken by father and mother, forsaken by all, Ed, Thou shalt no longer be termed forsaken, Isaiah 62, 4. But you will be called Hepzibah. The Lord will change his servant's name from being known as forsaken to be blessed and children of God. Secondly, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit will I put within you. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. The Lord wants to give a new heart and spirit to obey his commandments and to walk in his ways. He wants to change the stony heart to a heart of flesh. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 11.19 God wants to make us a new creation in Christ, reflecting his righteousness and holiness. The Lord gives a new heart and spirit to love one another, to love even enemies, to forget and to forgive all past wrongs done to us by others. The Lord wants to fill us with a new level of piety, 
a humble and fleshy heart the stony heart prevents the seed of the word of god from producing the fruits of the spirit namely love joy peace patience kindness goodness self control etc the lord wants to give us a new personality to transform our lives by the renewing of our minds god wants to put in us a new name created after the likeness of jesus in righteousness and holiness ephesians 4:24 the lord wants to fill us with new strength and power god wants to give power to the faint hearted and to him who has no might he increases strength the lord gives new strength to his anointed to do mighty things God strengthened Gideon to fight the Midianites. Samson fought the Philistines. They could not stand against new strength and might given to Gideon and Samson by God. Esther was given this new strength to go before the king uncalled. Paul with this new strength stood before King Agrippa. God strengthens his beloved to fight against the wiles of Satan. clothing them with the armor of truth righteousness the gospel of peace faith salvation and the sword of the spirit we may be tired weary discouraged and disappointed but the word wants us to come and wait in his presence to receive strength of an eagle to soar high up as we worship and pour out our hearts before him and meditate on his words and promises he will fill us with a new strength and energy which will ener- enable us to carry out his commandments and to face the challenges easily when god strengthens and transforms us we can overcome all the problems of life be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded 2 chronicles 15:7 Let us dedicate ourselves to do the Lord's will, work with new strength he bestows on us. God wants us to give new mercies every day. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Lamentations 3:22. The Lord's love and mercies to those who love him are always new and many. It is his mercy that has sustained and protected us so far. The Lord delivers us from all adversaries and crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. We need not carry the load of our guilt, of our past sins and failures. The Lord in his mercy, which is new every morning, forgives all our sins and fills us with his spirit so that we can face our future with confidence. Let us pray so that his tender mercy is showered on us so that we may live a pleasing life to him. The Lord wants us to give a new song, a new song of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord Almighty. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to my God, says David in Psalm 43. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song for he has done marvelous work, Psalm 98.1. So God wants us to give us a new song. He wants to us to sing new songs for him. Moses and his people of Israel sang a new song as they crossed the Red Sea. The Lord gave a new song in the mouth of Deborah as she defeated her enemies and served the people of Israel. In the mouth of Mary, Lord gave a new song of praise which is now new even today. The songs of Zechariah and the song of Simeon were all new songs of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord Almighty. We should no longer sing the old song of want, weariness and sorrow. Instead, our mouths should be filled with praise and thanksgiving unto God. John, while in Patmos, saw in his vision 24 elders singing a new song of praise to the Lamb. Revelation 5. 6 to 10 The Lord wants to give us a new heaven and a new earth a new life which is eternal a mansion by the side of the waters of life on either side of which are the trees of life with 12 kinds of fruits yielding its fruit every month God wants to join us to join the throng of 144000 to sing a new song hallelujah salvation power and glory belong to our gods 
Revelation 19.1 There shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God, and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face. Revelation 22.3-4 Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He shall dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. There shall be no mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 21, 3-4 As God has promised to provide all new things to keep for those who keep his commandments, and obey his words. Let us therefore strive to realize all these new blessings by becoming a new creation in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. This article by my father from the book Sweeter Than Honey by my father, Mr. K. V. Vergis, this article titled All Things New is the eighth chapter from his book, was published in the magazine Altmaya Sandesham in August 2011. God bless.